At the head of the mobs, there is always a boss, also known as a mafioso, a don, or a godfather. These are the men responsible for running the mobs and they are often responsible for ordering the murders of people. Some mobsters have gained notoriety for the level of brutality that they have inflicted on other people and for the numbers of murders they have committed. These men are known as some of the most ruthless in history. Giovanni Brusca Brusca was born on February 20th, 1957. He was a member of the Sicilian Mafia who went by the nicknames The Pig, The Swine, and The Christian Slayer. During his time in the Mafia, he claimed to have killed somewhere between 100 and 200 people but had lost count and was unsure of the exact number. When you kill that many people, sure, you're gonna lose track. Brusca had become one of the most powerful Mafia bosses in Sicily. It is believed that Brusca was involved in a series of bombings during the mid-1990s. It was also known to the authorities that Brusca was responsible for the deaths of many people. A mafia turncoat who had cooperated with investigations remembered Giovanni Brusca as a wild stallion but a great leader. He was finally arrested in 1996 and was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. As he collaborated with the authorities, they have allowed him to spend one week out of every 45 out of prison to see his family. In 2021, Brusca was released from prison. Bernardo Provenzano Provenzano was a member of the Cosa Nostra Sicilian Mafia who was born in Corleone, Sicily on January 31, 1933. He earned himself the nicknames of Benny the Tractor because in the words of one informant, he mows people down. Other nicknames was the accountant due to his apparently subtle and low-key approach to running his crime empire, at least in contrast to some of his more violent predecessors. Provenzano frowned upon the use of telephones and issued orders and communications even to his family through small, hand-delivered notes called Pizzini. Many of the notes from Provenzano that police have intercepted sign off with religious blessings such as one that concluded, May the Lord bless and protect you. According to mob godmother turned informant Giuseppina Vitale, Provenzano had appeared at a 1992 Casa Nostra summit meeting dressed in the purple robes of a Catholic bishop. Religious behavior and language progressively came the prominent features of Provenzano's figure. For example, Provenzano systematically underlined verses from the Bible and took notes of relevant passages to be threaded in his Pizzini through otherwise routine instructions regarding daily business matters. He also recurrently thanked our Lord Jesus Christ and referred to the divine providence and our beloved Lord, expressing the hope that he might help us to do the right things. Provenzano was a fugitive from the law from the time of his indictment for the murder in 1963 until his arrest in 2006. He was on the run for an unparalleled 43 years. After his arrest, he was held at the maximum security prison in Turney, Italy and subjected to the Article 41 bis prison regime. In total, Provenzano was given 20 life sentences plus 49 years and one month and solitary confinement for 33 years and six months. On July 13, 2016, Provenzano died in Milan from complications of bladder cancer at a hospital in prison at the age of 83. Anthony Accardo Tony Accardo was also known as Joe Batters or Big Tuna. He was born in Chicago, Illinois on April 28, 1906. Accardo got the nickname Joe Batters after using a baseball bat to murder three mobsters who had betrayed the outfit. That'll teach him. His career as a criminal spanned eight decades, beginning as a small-time hoodlum before becoming the boss of the Chicago Outfit in 1947. He was the final Outfit authority in 1972. He was involved in many different types of rackets and was especially well-known as an enforcer. His violent streak was also well known. When his house was burgled in 1978, the four thieves were later found with their throats cut. Yeah, don't steal a man's TV. When Accardo retired, he lived with his daughter and son-in-law in Illinois. It was there that he died from heart and respiratory problems in 1992 at the age of 86. Despite his long criminal career and the horrendous crimes he had committed, he spent only one night in jail in his whole life. Matteo Messina Denaro Matteo Messina Denaro is a Sicilian Mafia boss who is also known as Diabolic, the name of a comic book character. 
He was born in Castle Vetrano in Sicily on April 26, 1962. Messina Denaro became known as one of the new leaders of the Casa Nostra and is now viewed as the boss of all bosses in the Italian Mafia. Few would recognize Matteo Messina Denaro on the street, but the Casa Nostra leader is one of the most sought-after fugitives on the planet. Denaro is a handsome ladies' man whose tinted shades hide slightly crossed feline eyes. He is said to be worth billions, favors fancy wristwatches, owns a pack of Porsches, and strictly avoids the camera lenses. He's been running since the 93 bombings, and as an Italian law enforcer said on the show, Matteo Messina Denaro is the most wanted fugitive in the Casa Nostra. His specialties include homicide, arson, and terrorism. Denaro brags about having killed enough people to fill a small cemetery. Messina Denaro has been a fugitive since 1993 and is one of the top 10 most wanted men in the world. He has been linked to many deaths and his own criminal activities include protection rackets, narcotics, and corruption. His whereabouts are still unknown to the police, although they have seized many of his assets. Charles Lucky Luciano Luciano was born in Lacara Fritti in Sicily on November 24, 1897. The famous Italian-American mobster and crime boss is considered the father of modern organized crime. Luciano was also the first boss of what is now the Genovese crime family and played an important role in the National Crime Syndicate. He ordered the murders of many people. In 1936, he was tried and convicted of running a prostitution racket. Although he received a 36-year prison sentence, he struck a deal and was deported to avoid imprisonment. He spent some time in Cuba and then lived in Italy. Although he was under police surveillance, he continued his criminal activities. Luciano died of a heart attack at Naples International Airport on January 26, 1962. Roy DeMio DeMio was a member of the Gambino crime family. This famous New York mobster headed the DeMio crew. He was born in Brooklyn, New York on September 7, 1942. Although the DeMio crew was responsible for more than 100 deaths, it is believed that over 70 of these murders were committed by Roy DeMio himself. In many cases, the victims were dismembered and disposed of in a manner that many were never found. The DeMio crew were especially notorious for what would become known as the Gemini Method. Victims would typically be lured into the apartment behind the Gemini Lounge, shot, dismembered, and their body parts wrapped up and sent to garbage dumps in Brooklyn. Most of their victims' remains were never recovered. By 1982, the FBI was investigating the enormous number of missing and murdered persons who were linked to DeMio or who had been last seen entering the Gemini Lounge. According to the book Murder Machine, in his final days, Roy DeMille was seen wearing a leather jacket with a shotgun concealed underneath. On January 10, 1983, DeMille went to crew member Patrick Testa's body shop for a meeting with his men. A few days later, on January 18th, he was found murdered in his abandoned car's trunk. He had been shot multiple times in the head and had a bullet wound in his hand, assumed by law enforcement as being from throwing up his hand to his face in a self-defense reflex when the shots were fired at him. Boss Paul Castellano was indicted for ordering the murder of DeMio, as well as a host of other crimes, but he was killed in December 1985 while out on bail in the middle of the first trial. The murder was ordered by by John Gotti, who thus became the new boss of the Gambino family. Louis Buckhalter Louis Lepke was an American mobster and head of the Mafia hit squad Murder, Inc. during the 1930s. Buckhalter is the only American mob boss to have received the death penalty after being convicted of murder. Louis Buckhalter was executed using the infamous Old Sparky electric chair after being sent up the river to Sing Sing Correctional Facility. Buck Halter was described as a quiet man who for years managed to avoid the public spotlight. In conversations with his criminal associates, Buck Halter preferred listening over talking. Buck Halter generously compensated his gang members and took them to hockey games, boxing matches, and even winter cruises. In the early 1930s, Buck Halter created an effective process for performing contract killings for Casa Nostra mobsters. It had no name, but the press, 10 years later, called it Murder, Inc. The Casa Nostra mobsters wanted to insulate themselves from any connection to these murders. Buck Halter's partner, mobster Albert Anastasia, would relay a contract request from the Casa Nostra to Buck Halter. In turn, Buck Halter would assign the job to Jewish and Italian street gang members from Brooklyn. 
In 1935, law enforcement estimated that Bulkhalter and Shapiro had 250 men working for them, and that Bulkhalter was grossing over $1 million or $19 million in current dollar terms per year. They controlled rackets in the trucking, baking, and garment industries throughout New York. On March 4, 1944, Louis Bulkhalter was executed in the electric chair in Sing Sing. He had no final words. A few minutes before Bulkhalter's execution, his lieutenants were also executed. Albert Anastasia One of the founders of the modern American Mafia and a co-founder and later boss of the Murder, Inc. organization, Anastasia eventually rose to the position of boss in what became the modern Gambino crime family. He also controlled New York City's waterfront for most of his criminal career, including the dock worker unions. Anastasia was one of the most ruthless and feared organized crime figures in American history. His reputation earned him the nicknames The Earthquake, The One Man Army, Mad Hatter, and Lord High Executioner. On the morning of October 25, 1957, Anastasia entered the barber shop at 56th Street in Midtown Manhattan. Anastasia's driver parked the car in an underground garage and then took a sidewalk outside, leaving him unprotected. As Anastasia relaxed in the barber's chair, two men, scarves covering their faces, rushed in, shoved the barber out of the way, and fired at Anastasia. After the first volley of bullets, Anastasia reportedly lunged at his killers. However, the stunned Anastasia had actually attacked the gunman's reflections in the wall mirror of the barber shop. The gunman continued firing until Anastasia finally fell dead on the floor. After the Anastasia assassination, the barber chairs at the Park Sheraton Hotel were repositioned to face away from the mirror. The Anastasia chair was later auctioned off for $7,000. In February of 2012, the chair became an exhibit at the Mob Museum in Las Vegas. Because where else do you have mob museums at? Salvatore Toto Rina Rina was an Italian mobster and chief of the Sicilian Mafia known for a ruthless murder campaign that reached a peak in the early 1990s. Salvatore Rina is one of the most feared mob bosses of all time. He was born in Corleone, Sicily on November 6, 1930. He was raised in Sicily and the Italian mobster became the boss of the Sicilian Mafia. During his criminal career, he personally murdered at least 40 people and ordered hits on hundreds of others. He even ordered the murders of several anti-mafia prosecutors. Unfortunately, it was this action that was his undoing that led to his arrest. He was charged with multiple crimes, including multiple murders, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. As part of the Maxi trial of 1986, Rena was sentenced to life imprisonment for mafia association and multiple murders. After years of living as a fugitive, he was captured in 1993. While in Parma prison, he underwent two surgeries in the medical unit. Following this, he was in a medically induced coma. Just a day after his 87th birthday, he died on November 17, 2017. Even after his death, he is considered the most dangerous mob boss ever. Nicodemo Domenico Scarfo Nicodemo Scarfo was also known as Little Nicky, The Killer, and Lethal Nicky. He was born in Brooklyn, New York on March 8, 1929. He was one of the Genovese crime family's made men. He later became the boss of the Philadelphia crime family. Those who knew him described him as cold-hearted and narcissistic. His downfall was trying to extort $1 million from Willard Rowles, a major commercial property developer. Rouse contacted the FBI and this eventually led to the arrest of Scarfo. In total, he was sentenced to 45 years in jail. During his criminal career, Scarfo had a murderous reputation. From many accounts of his former criminal associates who testified against him stated he would want to murder someone if he was shown the slightest or smallest bit of disrespect or even if he was stared at or if he was just in a bad mood. He would kill somebody or order someone to be killed or if he didn't like the way his burger was cooked, it didn't take much for Scarfo to kill someone. He highly enjoyed killing people and ordering murders. He ordered murders if he was just in a bad mood, he ordered countless murders on a daily basis, and he loved and enjoyed it like it was his favorite hobby. During his regime, Scarfo ruled Philadelphia and Atlantic City with an iron fist. He ruled through fear and terror, controlling both cities with an iron fist, but with a reign of terror through extreme violence, brutality, murder, intimidation, and fear. 
Normally, all criminal gangs and drug dealers paid Scarfo 30 to 50 percent of their weekly earnings. While serving time at the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, Scarfo died of natural causes on July 13, 2017. Their days of reign over or on the run in fear of the law, these ruthless criminals met their end. But it's far short of justice for their victims as their crimes are too vast for accountability. Let's just be thankful they aren't with us anymore, at least as far as we know. Until next time.